time. Interdependence. This means individuals work together to achieve a greater success. And the specialty coffee industry is a great and daily example. Because why do we produce coffee? Right, for guests to enjoy it. And to do so, they rely on the baristas, while those rely on their roasters. And the roasters rely on their producers, showing us that only together we can create tasty beverages and with those also great experiences. Much like I, Ella, would love to share with you today. So dear judges, let's get started. First off, I need to ask you for a little patience and trust as I will prepare the shots for my signature and milk beverages first before starting to serve you the espressos. This though gives us plenty of time to focus on my coffee's background information. So please open the booklets in front of you. They're a gift for you to keep. And also feel free to take your notes at any time during the presentation. This coffee is an Arabic variety called 74158, and its origin is Spensa in the Sidama region of Ethiopia. Earlier this year, I was lucky enough to visit my friend Tamiru to see his farms and washing stations there. And now I'm even luckier. We interdepend, meaning he produced today's coffee while I have the chance to give it a platform like this. So I hope you aren't afraid of heights because this coffee was grown at an altitude of more than 2,400 meters above sea level. Due to the relatively cool temperatures of 19 to 22 degrees there, the plants have a slow metabolism, resulting in very small and dense beans, which preserve lots of fruity and complex flavors that you will later find in your espressos. To highlight those, we chose a new experimental processing method for which three different crops of the same harvest and variety were used. Mosto, cascara and cherries were combined to create a sweet and fruity flavor profile full of caramel and yellow stone fruits. So let's have a closer look at this together. All crops were picked between beginning and end of January this year when the fruits were ripe at 20 bricks. Cherries of crop one were then anaerobe fermented for 120 hours and the leftover liquid called mosto was saved and later put with my cherries. Crop two got deep hot and the skins were dried on raised beds. With those, Tamiro Buddha Cascara tea filtered it and also put it into the barrel with my coffee. The mix of mosto, cascara and cherries was then sealed and left to anaerobe ferment for 72 hours. In this time, new and old bacterial cultures from the mosto interdependent with the pulp sugars. Combined with the sweet and moisture and cascara tea, the coffee developed a smooth texture and a bright citric acidity. To avoid over-fermentation and therefore unpleasant alcoholic notes, the cherries got rinsed quickly before then drying as a natural on African dry beds for 24 days. What's important next is the trusting and interdependent relationship between producer, roaster, and barista. Exchanging feedback and ideas helps all of us to grow knowledge and improve our work. That's why I'm happy I also teamed up with Nikos and Zaras from Zamba Coffee Roasters here in Athens. Together, we roasted the beans for today as an 800 gram batch for 10 minutes and 10 seconds. With the development of 7% and an end temperature of 206 degrees. This relatively light roast, combined with letting the beans rest and degas for 22 days, really opened up the coffee's intense fruity notes of blueberries and blood orange. For the most consistent and clean results, I'm using three tools today. First, the Autocomp, 
By steering the integrated needles like this, we get an even distribution of the coffee particles from top to bottom. Next, I'm leveling the coffee bed with the NCD. And last but not least, I'm using the puck press automatic temper with 15 bars pressure. Combined, these methods result in more consistency in the distribution and density. And therefore then, in the extraction and the overall cup quality. Now, please write down today's beautiful flavor notes of blueberries and sweet pineapple with the first dip. And then ripe apricot and toffee with the second. The aftertaste is long-lasting and pleasant, leaving us with blood orange juice. And for the tactiles, please note that the thickness is medium, while the texture is smooth. Before trying, please evaluate the crema and then wait for further instructions. There you go. And for you? Oh, please wait for further instructions. There you go. And for you. Now, please note today's recipe using 20 grams in to 40 grams out with 93 degrees for all three courses to get a nice balance between the fruity notes and the citric acidity my coffee has to offer. Now, once you're ready, please stir the espresso 12 full times to homogenize. You can put the spoons in two of the cups in front of you and then drink it in two sips. Please enjoy. All right, judges, please turn over pages to see what happens when the espresso is interdependent with the milk I brought with me today. Firstly, before serving and explaining more, I would like you to write down the sweet flavor notes of orange cake and vanilla ice cream with the first sip. And then chocolate custard and butterscotch with the second. The aftertaste is lingering, reminding me of British shortbread. And the texture is smooth and creamy, giving us a dessert-like feeling. There you go. As you saw, I left the espresso to cool down. This was to increase the sweetness while giving the CO2 in the crema time to dissolve, resulting in less bitterness. For each espresso, I'm adding 50 grams of milk, steamed to 55 degrees giving us a nice balance between the fruity and milky notes. And for you, to show how interdependence leads to better results, I decided to combine oat milks of two different companies. They mostly use the same ingredients, but bring different taste and tactile qualities. So I mix them with a 50-50 ratio, giving us the creaminess of oatly and the sweetness of milk. There you go. To match the espresso smooth texture, I froze the oat milk mix and re-extracted 50%. This freeze distillation results in a super thick and creamy mouthfeel that helps transforming the coffee co coffee's toffee notes into butterscotch. And for you, please enjoy.
Thank you. So judges, it's time to share one last beverage, one last experience with you. Please turn over pages to see about the signature drink. As the first base, I used 80 grams of Tamiro's espresso. And next, I'm adding 40 grams of the leftover steamed milk mix from the previous course, giving us those tasty vanilla notes again. Now it's getting orange, and inspired by Tamiro, I combined Mosto and Cascara. So first, I mixed orange pulp with 2% of salt and left that to lacto-ferment for 120 hours. Now I'm using 25 grams of the strained mosto that is full of lactic acids and sweet citrus notes, transforming the coffee's apricot notes into a morena cherry. Then I dried orange peel and burda cascara tea with 4 grams of peel and 100 grams of cold water extracting in the fridge for 24 hours. 12 grams of this adds florality and combined with the espresso's blueberries gives us new notes of jasmine tea. Lastly, I wanted to share the welcoming smell of Athens Gardens by creating an orange blossom syrup. So first, I made 30 grams of simple syrup with a one-to-one -one ratio of water and unrefined sugar and then bed washed it. This common bartending technique adds complexity and sweetness, and I did it by adding 10 grams of melted cacao butter, giving the blend a hard shake and leaving it in the freezer overnight. Then the syrup melted again at room temperature while the fat stayed firm. So I added 5 grams of hand-picked orange blossoms to the extracted liquid and left that to soak in the fridge for 72 hours before straining. Now I'm using 20 grams of the final orange blossom syrup that helps transforming the coffee's toffee notes into salted caramel. To get a rich and creamy texture, I'm using a nitrogen shaker and also already added eight cold whiskey stones to avoid any dilution while cooling the drink a little to increase the sweetness. Now I would love to share with you my way of tasting, finding flavors by visualizing them in colors first. So please write down the notes of jasmine tea and vanilla ice cream with the first step. And then amorena cherry and salted caramel with the second. The aftertaste is long-lasting and pleasant. Lots of caramel and vanilla notes. And the mouthfeel's viscosity is medium to thick, while the texture is rich and creamy. Before taking your first sip, please wait until I call my time. And then swirl two times every time before drinking. There you go, and for you. There you go, and for you. Please do me a favor, close your booklet and have a look at the back. I've experienced interdependence many times in the specialty coffee industry. People willing to teach, learn and grow together, and I'm incredibly happy I get to be a part of it. So I drew these illustrations to show how each of us can work as an individual. While combined, we can create a bigger picture. Lastly now, to highlight the sweet and floral notes, I'm adding one spritzer of orange blossom water as a finish to the drink. All that's left to say is thank you for interdependent with me today, sharing both this experience and our time. And thank you, Ella Simon from Germany. We have a little break and we have a... We will